Kia ora. Ko te tuahahi, kamihi, ki to tato matua nui, tirangi, nana ne na mie kato, ihomai, nana hoki, ka tango, ko ao tau pononga. So I'm Audrey from Singapore, and I'm deeply, deeply honored and grateful to be here today uh, among such wonderful people and people of all different races, nationalities, religions, and cultures. So 360, this is the number in 2010 of the number of people who own more than half of the world's wealth. Today, in 2016, this number is shrinking. And Muhammad Yunus, in his Jerka speech, actually mentioned a very pressing point. Is the problem really about inequality? Or is the problem really about wealth concentration? And many of us have been thinking about this from different paradigms and different economic systems, models, and some of us are challenging the status quo to rethink what money can really do to flow and deploy funds in a way that could benefit people at the bo bottom of the pyramid, at the poorest of the poorest. I stand on the shoulders of giants, and this lady in the middle that you see is actually my co-founder, Lina. And she was actually my lecturer back in the university in the Bay Area in Stanford. And who would, who would know, like God knows, that we would end up doing business together? And life takes you to strange places. You never know who you'd be doing business with. So look around this room. Some magic might happen in the next few days. And Lina had really been very, very kind in introducing me to her network. And this is something that I feel about this place, this land, that people are so incredibly generous. And the generosity has kind of touched me too. So I just invite all of you to feel that generosity in this space as well. And I got introduced to Toraj Mello, this lady that you see um, with me and Lina. She's the founder of an amazing company in Indonesia called Tarajamalo. And what she does is that she works with women weavers across different parts of Indonesia to revive the culture of weaving and to weave lives together to provide dignified living and income. Because what I found out from Dini was that when she went back to the village in Toraja, she ended up seeing like babies and like Chinese babies running around in a place like Indonesia. And the question was kind of like, why? Why were these babies running around? And we realized that a lot of the women who had gone out of their villages had to end up working as migrant workers or even as sex workers. And what she's done is revive a culture of weaving, which is traditionally very, very kind of um, historical, to turn it into contemporary gifts and clothings. And she's a social enterprise today that's already working with a thousand women weavers across Indonesia. And what we've done is deployed funding to support her. And from a perspective of impact investing, we call it patient capital. And more importantly, we find that Dini is actually not alone. In fact, there are many other women entrepreneurs, and Sabrina is one case in point as well, being to bar chocolate from Indonesia. And a lot of these women entrepreneurs that we work with come from illustrious careers and professions. Like, she used to, make, to, she used to be a McKinsey consultant. She's left that and gone back to their village to really work with the farmers, to actually bring them up the supply chain, to train them, and then to bring their products like chocolate, moving from a place of commodity to a place of artisanal products. And so we open doors for people like, like Sabrina and her business so that you know, folks like Google and Facebook can buy their products into the corporate pantry. And that's just really the tip of the iceberg. And so we found that in a Monitor Group report and Acumen that there is a phenomenon known as the pioneer gap. And essentially what this is really is that there are entrepreneurs that are too small for seed funding but too large for impact funding. And there's a need to kind of close this gap. And what they need most of the time is access to capital that's not microfinance and it's not donations, but larger amounts of capital so that they can really do the work that they do. And just to give you a data point as well, this is the number of the women entrepreneurs in the Valley who get funded by venture capitalists. Think about that for a moment, guys. Think about that. How much more for the women entrepreneurs all around Southeast Asia who are doing amazing work, impacting local lives in sustainable agriculture and sustainable fashion. These women sometimes have businesses that are not sexy. So how can we change that? And so our model is really to go beyond donations, to use money that would traditionally be used for philanthropy to go into the space of impact funding. And women are good investments because we see that if you give a women entrepreneur 50% less capital, they generate 20% more revenue for you. 
And guys, this is data, okay? So data speaks. So invest in women. <laughs> and more importantly, um, we championed the three UN Sustainability Development Goals, um, no poverty, gender equality, and responsible production, as we are kind of, you know, kind of starting with um, sustainable culture and uh, agriculture and sustainable fashion. There is also a movement to go beyond tech for good in some of these places around Southeast Asia. And our model is really like Nat was saying: it's not just only for Southeast Asia, because if we can deploy capital truly, this can go into places like the Pacific Islands, even in New Zealand, for women entrepreneurs, even in Africa. And so, as a technologist myself, we're bridging this gap today with um, technology and blockchain. So what you see here is you know, a lot of the stories, but I invite you to come to me and talk to me about the technology side, because we've been using blockchain for the last um, two years to remit money across ASEAN, and it's really bring the cost of doing business completely down. And this is truly disruptive, because we're finding there are innovators in the space who are rallying behind these women entrepreneurs for a very specific mission in ending poverty. And so I leave you with that, and kia ora.